Hi everybody and welcome to a new mini-series. In this series you're going to learn how you can effectively deploy your machine learning models into production. The mini-series is going to be made up of two videos, this video and the next. In this video you'll learn different strategies that you can use to deploy machine learning models into production from a theoretical perspective. I'm also going to give you an overview of the different ML deployment tools available on the market. In the next video, we're going to take one of these ML deployment tools, namely BentML, and we're going to use it to deploy a sample machine learning model into production. Let's get started. There are different strategies that you can use to deploy machine learning models into production. One is to take a model and wrap it within a service and serve it through a REST API using endpoints. Another one could be to take your model and directly deploy it on an edge device like Arduino or Raspberry Pi. But if you don't need to have external access and rather you need some sort of, of offline computation, you can just do batch serving. Of course, you're gonna decide on different deployment strategies depending on the use case that you're tackling. In my practice as a consultant in machine learning, machine learning operation, most of the time I see option one, strategy one used. In other words, going for serving a model through a REST API. Now, let's take a look at a basic approach to ML deployment, and in particular to deploy a machine learning model uh, within uh, a REST API. Of course, we would start from the model itself. The model can be a Keras model, could be a PyTorch model, Scikit model, whatever you want really. Now, you take the model and you build an API around the model using a web framework like Flask or potentially Fast API. At this point, you have all the ingredients to serve your model to the external world. So you can take your service and deploy it directly on a computation unit like AWS EC2, an instance. Right. But there is a more sophisticated and better practice approach, which is rather than taking your service and directly deploy it onto a computation instance, you could just containerize it. So you create a Docker image out of it. And now you can uh, take uh, the Docker image and then deploy it directly on an EC2 instance, for example, or on GCP, wherever you want, really. Or if you have a system that's more complex, because perhaps it's made up of many different models with a lot of different use cases, uh, the best case scenario here would be to take your Docker image and then deploy it on, in a Kubernetes cluster. In this case, you would have sort of microservice architecture. Now, this is a, an approach that I've seen uh, used multiple times. Well, I mean, all of the different approaches that we've seen so far. Uh, but this basic ML deployment strategy or strategies, because it's more than one really, have some drawbacks. So they have some disadvantages. First of all, the whole process is quite convoluted. You have to go through a lot of different steps. Uh, for example, you have to package both the ML code and the model artifacts together and you have to do this in a custom way and it can be a little bit of a hassle doing that. Also, you have to create some infrastructure around your solution. The infrastructure is needed for, yeah, of course, creating the Kubernetes uh, cluster or creating a monitoring infrastructure that will monitor all of your uh, models deployed into production, or it can be as simple as creating some documentation around your service API. None of that comes for free because you're doing everything from scratch. On top of that, there's the issue that uh, the web server that you're using most likely is not going to be optimized for ML inference. Don't get me wrong here. I think that Flask and uh, FastAPI as two web servers that you can use are fantastic, but they're not particularly designed for ML inference. They would expect high throughputs, like for example, for many web applications, but not high computation. So in that respect, the web servers that you're using are not ideal for the use case of ML inference. 
For all of these reasons, we see now the advent of ML deployment tools on the market. Some of these tools are open source, others are proprietary. Here, I just want to list a few of them and guide you through some of the pros and cons that I believe they have, and then we'll focus on the one that will analyze more in detail. Okay, let's get started from TensorFlow Serving. Now, TensorFlow Serving is a deployment tool or framework, if you will, which lives within TensorFlow Extended. TensorFlow Extended uh, is a sort of framework that manages the entire life cycle for a, a machine learning project. So TF serving is just a part of that, but it's quite powerful. It allows you to deploy directly your TensorFlow models. Now, this works like a charm whenever you're using Keras and TensorFlow models, but if you're using other models like PyTorch or Scikit-learn, uh, of course, TensorFlow Serving is not going to uh, work for you. Also, the other issue that I have with TensorFlow Serving is that just like for most of TensorFlow, documentation isn't really that uh, great. Another valid option is MLflow. Uh, once again, MLflow is not just a tool for deployment. There's way more um, to that. And indeed, MLflow takes care of the entire life cycle of a machine learning uh, project, but it has out of four units that mix, mix it up, it has one that's called MLflow model. Now, MLflow model is a standard that allows you to package uh, an ML uh, project in a way that can be easily uh, deployed into production. But now you don't necessarily have a simple way or direct way of doing this uh, deployment. You just have a very nice way of packaging uh, your project and to easily dockerize it, containerize it. And then once you have your container, you can deploy it uh, wherever you want. So MLflow uh, model, I think it's really, really cool as a solution, but it has some issues. So first of all, it can only be uh, easily deployed into uh, Azure and SageMaker, if I remember correctly. Then uh, the other big issue that I have with uh, this approach to deployment is that you're going to get a lot of uh, libraries. You're going to get a lot of noise that you don't want. And so it's not really a lightweight uh, solution. Let's take a look at another option, which is Selden. Now, Selden is yet another uh, framework that uh, manages the entire uh, sort of like ML workflow. Uh, the cool thing about it is that it is completely integrated and built on top of Kubernetes. So if you are thinking of using like Kubernetes and deploy there your models, then Selden is a really good solution. The only issue that I have with Selden uh, is that it is uh, sort of like created by a company and it is distributed by a company. So I personally prefer to go with completely free, completely open source uh, solutions. And regarding Selden, so I, I said that this is a, a full framework for uh, ML projects, but it has a part of it that's called Selden Deploy, which is responsible only for deployment on uh, the deployment of your projects. There is also another great alternative if you want to work on Kubernetes, and this one is completely free, completely open source, and it's called uh, KServe. KServe is a part of Kubeflow. Kubeflow being this ML um, workflow framework that has been developed by engineers at Google, and it's been used internally to work on machine learning projects. This is quite cool because it allows you to uh, serve directly your models into a Kubernetes cluster, and it is part of the, the Kubeflow environment. So if you want to do more than just deployment, you can easily do that. And of course, if you want to do all of that on Kubernetes. Now, the problem with KServe is that it is quite complex to set up. And uh, also it's just like Selden, you are completely locked into Kubernetes. So if you don't use Kubernetes, then 
neither KSERV nor Selden are good solutions for you. In most of my projects, I've used Bento ML. This is a killer solution for deploying machine learning models into production. Bento ML's tagline is simplify model deployment. I think this sentence here really summarizes well what BentML is all about. So BentML is an open platform that simplifies ML model deployment and enables you to serve your models at production scale in minutes. Let's take a look at the different features that BentML has to offer. First of all, it is service-oriented deployment. In other words, with BentML, you can create REST APIs. If you use BentML, you can throw out of the window Flask and FastAPI, whatever web server you're actually using, because BentML is gonna replace that. And the great thing is that uh, the option that BentML offers is way more performant than Flask or Fast API because it, it is indeed optimized for machine learning inference. Now, the other great thing about BentML, just like MLflow model, it allows you to package all the necessary artifacts for a successful machine learning deployment into a single unit. So. Uh, you're going to take your model, you're going to take your code, and you're going to package it into a bento. A bento is the unit of deployment used in bento ML. The great thing about bentos is that they're going to be stored uh, locally in a registry, and this registry is going to also version the different bento. Another cool point about BentML is that it supports all major machine learning libraries so that you can use PyTorch, Scikit, Keras, TensorFlow. Uh, no matter what you use, here you have a solution that works with all of them. A bento also integrates perfectly with Docker. You can take a bento and with a simple command line instruction, you can take a Docker uh, out of that that then you can deploy wherever you want. Bento makes deployment on Kubernetes also quite straightforward thanks to a tool called Yatai. Let's take a look at it. So Yatai uh, is built on top of bento and it allows you to take your bentos and deploy them at scale on Kubernetes in a very simple and straightforward uh, manner. Another great feature that BentML has is documentation, automatic documentation. This is a little bit of a hassle when you create APIs, right? So you have to create also a, an open API kind of documentation, and all of that is generated automatically for you. So this is really, really cool. Of course, BentML has some cons, and I think I've identified a couple of this. So first of all, BentML works only with Python. So for example, if you are using Go for your machine learning models, well, then BentML is not gonna cut it for you because it's a Python-only library. And more than that, the other aspect is that BentML is a tool focused only on deployment, which basically means that all the other aspects of your ML pipeline, like building and training your models or tracking your models, it should be done with other tools. So if you're using BentML, you have an extra tool to deal with, and this is different uh, if you compare it, for example, with uh, Kubeflow or MLflow, there uh, you basically have the entire um, sort of workflow, ML workflow done for you. In this case, you have to deal with an extra tool that does only one thing. But I think the price is worth paying because deploying with BentML is actually quite easy. By now, you should have a decent understanding of different strategies to deploy machine learning models into production and the different tools available. In the next video, we're going to be focusing on BentML. We're going to create a sample model that classifies the famous MNIST digit uh, dataset, and then we're going to deploy it into production using BentML. I'll see you next time.